Hi everyone, so I've received a few requests to make a short video about this quadcopter, so I thought I'd just give a brief overview of a few of the components I've used, as well as show some flight footage towards the end of the video. So to uh, begin with, the frame of this quadcopter is made of 3D printed ABS plastic. I designed the frame in Autodesk Inventor, and then a friend of mine printed it out for me on his 3D printer. The entire frame is one big piece. So there aren't any weak points uh, along any joints, or there aren't any pieces that need to be glued together. So as far as durability is concerned, this quadcopter is extremely durable. I've tested it by uh, throwing it off a two-story balcony, I've stepped on it, and I've also uh, thrown it on the ground, and it hasn't broken yet. So I expect it to outlast a lot of the components on this quadcopter um, in terms of endurance. So moving on, uh, I, for my power system on this quadcopter, I used the 2900 kV 1811 motors by Turnigy, and I matched them with these 5 inch props that Hobby King sells. Uh, unfortunately, although the props are matched for these uh, motors, the uh, prop holes do not match up with the motor shaft size. The holes are actually just a little bit smaller than the motor shaft, so you have to bore out the hole in order to make it fit. We also have to be careful because these propellers are tension fitted onto the motor shaft so you can't bore out that hole too much otherwise the propeller will come flying out in the middle of one of your flights which happened to me uh, earlier. So just, uh, just a warning if you're going to use this power system. For the motors I've also used these uh, 6 amp Paternity Plush ESCs. Uh, what I did with these ESCs is I removed the heat shrink. I did not flash them, I didn't want to deal with that for this particular build. But I did remove the heat shrink. I directly soldered the motor wires onto the ESC. And on the other end, I added my own power cables because the ones that came with them were too short. So once all the ESCs were heat, sh uh, heat shrunk, I used zip ties to hold them down to the frame. Just a straightforward process. Uh, they're really tight on there. They won't be coming off in, in flight. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, moving on to the middle of the quadcopter here, I have my KK2, uh, which I also ordered from Hobby King. I modified the buzzer uh, for um, this particular build because the original buzzer that comes with the KK2 has uh, a relatively long cable and I didn't want to have to deal with routing that uh, through this uh, build so I essentially just took the buzzer and directly soldered it to a JST cable so now it's just one small piece that sits up vertically right there. It clears this prop uh, just, just enough so it's not an issue but uh, I prefer it this way rather than having to deal with the cable of the original buzzer. Also, on my KK2, I've uh, attached my FR Sky VD5M receiver. It uses micro Molex connectors, so I had to create these custom cables in order to connect it to my KK2. And as you can see here, I only use the power and ground cables for one of the channels, and then the other four channels just have signal wires. I did that mainly just to limit uh, the amount of wiring I would have to do, plus it gives it a little bit of a nicer look when you don't have too many wires going around everywhere. Lastly, uh, down the middle of the quadcopter is my power distribution. I did not use any type of board or anything like that. I just soldered the cables together. I also routed all of the signal wires underneath the uh, KK2, and then it comes up on the side and plugs in just right there. So on the bottom of the quadcopter here, I have a Nanotech 1000 milliamp hour uh, two-cell battery. It's, I think, 25C discharge. You can see right there it's got a 5C charge rate. It's a really great battery. Uh, on this particular build with its uh, power system and its weight, I get about 10 minutes of flight time using this battery, which is more than enough because uh, I have another battery which I can swap out once this one's finished. I also have a small Velcro strap here which I zip-tied onto the bottom of the frame uh, so that the battery can slide in and out easily without having to deal with any other uh, sort of battery retaining system. So uh, yeah, that's about it. That covers most of the uh, components I used in this build. I can tell you the uh, total cost of everything, including the frame, the motors, the propellers, the controller board, the receiver, and the batteries, uh, and the speed controllers, if I haven't already said that, um, cost $140 after shipping. So in terms of uh, what you can normally get for quadcopters, that's actually a pretty decent price. Uh, a lot of quadcopters are $200 or more when you add up all the components. So $140 is pretty respectable. Uh, because this frame is so small, it's about uh, 200 millimeters motor to motor in the diagonal. Um, along the sides, it's five and a half inches between each motor. And uh, because of its small size, it is extremely aerobatic. Uh, I can do a lot of quick moves and turns on this quadcopter that I couldn't do on the larger ones that I've built in the past. So it is a really uh, agile platform. I'm considering maybe using it in the future as a FPV platform. But uh, for now, I'll just stick with it as an aerobatic platform. 
Uh, right, so I'll show you some flight footage I recorded earlier today. Uh, it was a little bit too windy outside to film some good footage, so I had to record this uh, footage indoors. It gives you a good idea of um, how aerobatic the quad is or how quickly it can bounce around. And there are a couple of crashes in there as well, just kind of flew it into the wall a couple of times. So it'll give you a good idea also of how durable the frame is and how these components handle in a crash. All right, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the flight video.